The dust has now settled on season 8 of Game of Thrones and I find myself with more questions than answers in the aftermath even after a few months have now passed. For me personally season 8 was very disappointing in terms of the writing. It really let down the fantastic acting and production value as a whole. I have criticised David Benioff and D.B. Wise before but I never thought the writing would fall so hard. In this video I'm not going to break down the whole of season 8 but just one of the aspects of the ending that with a little bit more time given to it perhaps could have helped mitigate some of the larger plot holes in their approach to the ending maybe even provide better character resolutions to some now for the sake of the video i'm working on the assumption that the bigger picture of the ending will be largely the same in the book so daenerys dies john is exiled bran is king and so on i just think there was a much better way of getting there for one character in particular and would result in a much more satisfying ending as a whole and that character is John. I might even go as far as saying that I think this idea may happen in some form in the book. All I've done is look back through lore for ideas that could be applied to the ending to give John a more meaningful resolution and frankly help it make more sense. So let's paint the scene. Daenerys has just burnt King's Landing to ashes to a horrified Jon Snow. After talking to a captive Tyrion, Jon is convinced to assassinate his lover for the greater good. All this plays out as it does in the show, but here is where I would change things. After Jon has assassinated Daenerys, he is then discovered by Grey Worm, sat on the Iron Throne cradling Daenerys' body. This leads to confrontation between the two, with Jon killing Grey Worm in a one-on-one -on -one duel. Drogon then arrives, burning the throne and taking Daenerys' body away, much like in the actual ending. Now, the problem here is what do you do with Daenerys' magic respawning unsullied? Would they still not just arrest Jon? For me, the only solution I see with this is, perhaps while Jon is fighting Grey Worm, it could be intercut with scenes of Jon's remaining Northmen fighting the unsullied, with the unsullied having the upper hand. However, there is a turning of the tide when the last remnants of the Lannister troops held captive rise up and join the Northmen in fighting the Unsullied, symbolically bringing together the fractured realm. So my idea from here is based on an event in the lore that happens at the end of the Dance of Dragons, where Lord Kragen Stark becomes Hand of the King, the 11-year-old Aegon III, for just six days, just long enough to stabilise the realm and deal out his former justice to any involved in the assassination of Aegon II, as well as any other crimes committed during the dance before resigning his hand and heading back north to Winterfell. What Lord Stark did was very simple, but an effective way of cleaning up the mess the Dance of Dragons created. He joined the two sides together via the marriage of Aegon and Jahera Targaryen, he then purged anyone who had a role in the assassination of Aegon II. My idea takes a lot of inspiration from this. So after Jon has killed Grey Worm and the Westerosi troops have pacified the Unsullied, Jon would meet with Tyrion and some of the other lords such as Davos and Gendry. Tyrion would then offer Jon the throne, asking him to rebuild the Seven Kingdoms using the power of his birthright as a Targaryen and a Stark. Jon would say no, feeling he could not after killing Daenerys, but after pressure and convincing he would accept. I'm sort of thinking maybe John could hear Maester Aemon's voice talking about the idea of love being the death of duty to help push him. The now King John would then call all the major lords to the King's Landing to swear fealty to him, including the likes of Sansa, Yara and the Dornish, and all the other notable lords of the realm. After all the lords have sworn fealty to John, John makes a speech addressing the lords. He talks about Daenerys with a hint of sadness and regret. He would obviously condemn her actions and the pain it's caused many and the devastation, but defend her ideas, her dream of breaking the will, as so long as the will kept turning, there would always be another Daenerys, or Cersei, there would always be another War of Five Kings, to make the realm bleed. He would also talk about and draw from his time with the Free Folk, where the will really had no power, where everyone choosing their own king brought the clans together. John would then announce he would be calling a great council to find not only a new king, but a new way of choosing who would be king, someone who in turn could be held accountable for their actions if their duty was not fulfilled. John would then abdicate the throne by announcing his intention to take the black at the conclusion of this great council. Things would then play out as it does in the show, with the council choosing a new king and a new way of picking the king. Tyrion would push for Bran and the ending plays out the same as it does in the show. Jon's one true act as king would be to break the wheel and make Daenerys' dream and good intention become closer to reality. What I like about this is it gives a much more purpose to Jon's lineage with it ultimately meaning something more than it did in the show. But with Jon calling the council still having the element of surprise and subverting expectations that D&D seemed to love so much. It would also stay true to Jon's character of not wanting power but it finds him and him 
then doing his duty. But this also allows him to maintain his own personal honour by achieving what Daenerys wanted and him taking the black and going beyond the wall with Tormund as a form of penitence in his own mind. Functionally, the ending is the same with much more depth and purpose to it, with a minor change in how it gets triggered. It's largely different than the Arrow of the Wolf from the Dance of Dragons, but takes the idea of a Stark coming to power for a short time, doing his duty before heading back north. The Arrow of the Wolf would not fix Season 8 by far, it only puts a plaster on the holes in the ending, but it would maybe prove a little more satisfying. So what do you all think of my idea? I'd love to talk about it in the comments and maybe see your ideas you would have done to fix the ending of the show and season 8 in general.